Hi everybody, I'm Lisa Hutchison, and I'm a professor at the UAMS College of Pharmacy. And I'm joined today with Serena Van. She is a fourth year pharmacy student. And behind the camera is Mr. Sun Ho, and he is also a fourth year pharmacy student. And we are joining in with the UAMS Centers on Aging to talk about medications and older adults. Our topic today is dietary supplements. We're also gonna um, use the word herbals or herbal supplements to talk about dietary supplements. So there are a lot of dietary supplements, but for the purpose of this presentation, we're going to focus on six dietary supplements that we think older adults need to be aware of. Um, and then after that, we're going to briefly go over what you can do to be more informed when it comes to dietary supplements. So the first supplement that we're going to go over today is St. John's wort. And patients often take the supplement for depression. Um, and although there is some evidence that St. John's wort helps with depression, what we want to remind you is that it does not provide consistent relief of, from depression. So for example, if you take um, sertraline or Zoloft for mood, then we expect that medication to work exactly the same way every time that you take it. However, with St. John's wort being a supplement, we don't know if it's going to work the same way um, every time that you take the St. John's wort supplement. In addition, St. John's wort is probably the number one supplement that we are most concerned with when it comes to um, drug interactions because it interacts with a lot of medications. We are most concerned with patients who are taking transplant medication, antidepressants, or warfarin, because taking these medications with St. John's Ward can cause them to be less effective. And in the case of transplant patients, you could end up losing your transplant. We just want to mention that St. John's Ward should not replace conventional medications for mood. Please speak with your provider. Please don't try to treat depression on your own. So our second supplement is glucosamine, and it's used for joint health or to treat joint pain as if uh, from arthritis. And so this is a drug that a lot of our older adults take. There's really no strong evidence that it works. I know a lot of people that take it for knee pain. And so if it works, well, great. But just be aware, it's because it is well tolerated, that there can be an interaction with blood thinners, so it can make them work too much, so you'd have bleeding. And it can also interact if people have diabetes or other problems with their glucose, because it can cause hyperglycemia. Our next supplement is ginkgo, and patients often take this for uh, dementia or brain health. Unfortunately, there's very little or no evidence to suggest that ginkgo help with these um, purposes. However, it is well tolerated. Some patients may um, experience a mild upset stomach or an abnormal heart rate. Um, and like glucosamine, ginkgo supplements, if you take it more than two weeks, it can also increase your risk of bleeding because it will interact with blood thinners. So elderberry. This is the time of year that we start to get a lot of questions about elderberry because people will take it uh, because it's becoming cold and flu season. So please be aware that it's not been shown that elderberry prevents colds or flu from occurring. There is a little bit of evidence that shows that it helps with a runny nose or congestion, and so it may be that it could help you there um, in place of some other over-the-counter medications. Um, and we do, though, want to caution you to avoid eating the raw elderberries. So even if you know that a bush out in your yard has elderberries on it and that you think you might could use those, they could cause a lot of diarrhea and vomiting, and that would be very difficult for you to tolerate, especially if you have a cold or the flu. Another supplement that we see patients taking for cold is echinacea. And um, unlike elderberry, which is reported to help with the symptoms of a cold or flu, echinacea actually reduces your chances of catching a cold. However, there is no evidence to suggest that it lengthens the it lengthens a cold. So once you catch a cold, a echinacea doesn't really help. It is generally well tolerated and there's not a lot of drug interactions. Some patients may develop an allergic reaction or experience nausea and stomach pain. 
So our last supplement is salt palmetto. And this is taken by a lot of older gentlemen for prostate health. However, there's uh, not a lot of evidence that it works. We have other medications that you can get by prescription that would help your prostate that you should probably consider instead. But at least it's pretty well tolerated and it doesn't interact with other medications. And so the um, worries with that are a little less um, than are with some of these other supplements that we've discussed. Next, we're going to briefly go over the difference between um, prescription medications and medications that you can purchase over the counter, such as aspirin um, and, and supplements. So unlike prescription medications or medications that can be purchased over the counter, supplements do not have to prove to the Food and Drug Administration that they are safe and effective before they are available to consumers. However, if you want a peace of mind, um, then we suggest that you look at supplements that have one of these three seals. They are from Consumer Lab, NSF International, U.S. Pharmacopeia. Now, these three organizations offer um, testing on quality of supplements. So when you purchase a supplement that have one of these three seals on it, you, um, you know that there is some sort of quality standard there. But we would also like to suggest that you consider looking at the FDA website to check if your supplement has been recalled by the FDA. And so you can search for the product under the type of dietary supplement and put in the name and it will pull up any time that they would have had a recall. The FDA will recall supplements if they've been found to be contaminated with salmonella or other product that might be detrimental to health. And also they'll recall those that might have been labeled improperly and maybe are saying that they do work for a disease state which hasn't had any evidence shown so far. In addition, we also suggest older adults keep a record of all of the medications and supplements that they're taking. So you can utilize a chart such as this one. You can, and you can um, write down the, the medication that you're taking or the supplement that you're taking, what it looks like, how much, it, how much you're taking or the dose, how you're using it and when you're using it. Also, your, the stop or start date of that medication and why you're taking that prescription or supplement. This will help your providers be more informed about what you're taking and make necessary changes to help you manage your health. So we'd like to leave you with these takeaway points. So just as Serena just said, please keep a list of all the dietary supplements that you're taking that you could share with your physician or pharmacist. Secondly, just remember the FDA cannot require that dietary supplements be tested for efficacy or safety. And so we have other ways that we would do a quality check, but we don't really have evidence that they work in every situation that they may say. Most herbals don't have much evidence that they work. And so we're not really sure that they should be recommended in many patients. Drug interactions may be serious, for example, the transplant rejection, that would be very serious. You could have a severe bleed or you could have big problems with your blood sugar if you have diabetes. Lastly, always consult your pharmacist or your physician before you start taking a dietary supplement and make sure they know what dietary supplements you are taking as they help make sure that you are safe. Thank you for joining us today. Please post any comments or questions that you may have on uh, this video and be sure you join us next time when we talk more about medications in older adults. Thank you.